welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create conscious change all around the world. Now here's your Wickedly Smart host, Angel B. Hartwell. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate wickedly smart women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Angel B. Hartwell, and today we welcome our special guest, Satya Leela. Satya Leela practiced chiropractic for about three years before deciding it really wasn't quite for her. She had been getting involved deeply in the sacred sexuality workshops community in the San Francisco Bay Area where she lived, and there was much more freedom and life in that. Even though Sacha had invested five years of her life and many thousands of dollars into chiropractic college, she wanted to become a sacred sexuality teacher herself. So she sold her chiropractic practice, did a training in teaching sacred sexuality, and began a career as a sacred sexuality teacher and then went on to create a school, the Center for Divine Passion, with her then partner, Kevin Fortune. She directed the school for a few years and then decided to simplify her life with only doing private sessions. She's taught sacred sexuality for over 30 years now, and it's been exactly what was right for her. Welcome to the show today, Sacha. So delighted to have you here. Thank you. It's really wonderful to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So um, I want to start with maybe your backstory, a little bit more of your backstory. Uh, You know, when you were in your childhood or your early adolescence, was sex and sexuality something that was, you know, welcomed and applauded and appreciated in your family or was it suppressed, repressed and depressed? Uh, It was actually, I was blessed with a mother who, um, was very sex positive and at the same time the you know the times were pretty um restrictive so she was she, she didn't um encourage me to um be promiscuous or anything like that but she she um she just without much words emanated a um a, an energy of enjoying sex and appreciating it and i could tell that my parents had a a physical relationship that it was behind closed doors but i could just feel the energy so i was really blessed in that way i've worked with so many people who have been brought up in um, fundamentalist religions and all that kind of repressive thing that most of the culture is permeated with and I was I was blessed to have a mother who um, loves sex. When she was 82, she said, "Sex isn't as frequent as often, but it's still um, it's better than it ever was." And I was like, "Oh, I want to be like that when I'm 82." <laughs> <laughs> Something to aspire to for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So, you know, what inspired you to go down the path of chiropractic initially? when you, Um, you know, started your career journey? It was, um, actually, it was from taking a vocational aptitude test. I was, I was a computer programmer. And uh, I was very misfit in that profession, although I have an aptitude for that kind of logical thinking. But it was just killing me. It was so deadening. And I wanted to do something that was helping other people and um, active because I was sitting at a desk looking at computer things all day. And so um, I took a vocational aptitude test and chiropractic came up as one thing that would be possible. And I didn't know anything about health and healing. I just kind of plunged in and it never was quite right for me. I, I never could get myself to 
be, I, I'm such a gentle person. I couldn't get myself to do that kind of, you know, <laughs> that chiropractors do. So I was trying to adapt and do more gentle things. And it was just, it just seemed to me after a while that it was, um, I was not really getting at the source of what was going on for people. They, you know, my clients would come back week after week with the same stuff. And, and a lot of it seemed to be emotional for me, uh, to seem to me to be emotional rather than um, physical, just, just popping a bone back in place over and over is not healing. It's just managing it. And I wanted to do something that was deeper. So I started working with bringing emotions into uh, the physical work. And along about that time, I got introduced to sacred sexuality and I started working with, um, I already had been working with pelvic muscles as a chiropractor with women, internal massage and things like that. And then when I, when I got into uh, sacred sexuality, I started bringing those practices into the work that I was doing. Right. So for our listeners, because we have listeners all over the world in 119 countries who, you know, we can say the word sex and sexuality, but then we now have added the word sacred in front of that. Mm -hmm. Help us understand what that means specifically. Well, sacred sexuality is... Re honoring the sexual energy as a powerful force that opens us up to divine energy. Um, there, it's, um, it's like a catalyst. It's like a rocket fuel. Like when a rocket get, takes off, there's a fire under the rocket that propels it upward. And the same is true for us with our sexual energy in the pelvis we can there are practices that you can learn um, that channel that energy upward so that we have a merging with divine energy yeah beautiful well you mentioned before that you've worked with some fundamentalists and people who have have had their sexuality repressed there is quite a cultural uh oppression i think of of sexuality. So to hear what you're saying here, there is a, a spiritual element that's being repressed as well yes. in, in the repression of, of uh, the sexual energy that yes. we all carry, right? Yeah. Right. So um, how did you, I mean, you live in, in California, so um, mm -hmm. I would guess that, that the sacred sexuality community was already there for you there are lots of places on this earth where we don't we just don't have that kind of community around so mm -hmm. so what inspired you to step into that community initially well um i was in a relationship where uh sex was really being difficult i was with a man who was very shut down sexually and years later, he told me that uh, he had found out that he had been sexually abused and um, he was intimidated by my sexual energy, but we didn't know that at the time. And he was blaming me for it. And I was uh, trying to accommodate to um, make him feel more comfortable. So I kind of shut my own energy down and um, I I got, I made myself much smaller than I was at the time and um, to try to fit in with him, mm -hmm. which was a codependent decision that I don't recommend mm -hmm. <laughs> because shutting down isn't very selective. You can't just shut down a little bit. You shut down and you psh, shut down. And that's what happened to me. And I was I was, I had no sexual energy and um, I was really flat and in my um, demeanor and just no spark, no aliveness. And um, I was working with a therapist and she recommended a sacred sexuality workshop. And so he and I went and we had this opening that weekend 
And there was like this little glimmer of hope. Wow, we could really have a good relationship. And I got, I was really excited about it. But we went home and he didn't want to do the practices and he didn't want to go to another workshop. And it, we just kind of had to let it drop. And we struggled on for about another year. And, um, and then it just became obvious that it wasn't happening. And we both mutually agreed with great relief to separate. And um, then I was free to open up again and start exploring on my own. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, the, um, I had met a man who was kind of like a rebound relationship. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about being sexual with him, and I was, I was just, I was terrified, which was completely unusual for me because I'd always been very confident in my sexuality. But I was afraid I wouldn't work. I was afraid I didn't remember how to be and how how to respond. And I I remember thinking, I can't ever do this again. I can't ever shut myself down to accommodate to somebody else. I, and so that kind of spurred a, a, a years of exploration with workshops and then assisting in the workshops and then doing a teacher training to teach Tantra. And um, uh, um, all those things opened me up again, even further than I had, had been before. And I, it, it changed my life. It changed, uh, it was just so, there was so much pleasure and so much joy and so much aliveness in me as a result of these practices and um, being in this field of energy of other people who were also doing this. Uh, it was, it, I, I attracted different partners into my life. I, I attracted partners instead of saying, you're too much, we're saying, is there more? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we like yeah. that. Instead of you're too yeah. much, is there more? <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. Yes, that was great. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get some more <laughs> from Sacha Leela. But right now we're going to have uh, a short break. We could leave smart women. We could use your help. If you're enjoying this show, please consider joining our community, making a donation at wickedlysmartwomen.com and sharing with your lovely lady friends that might benefit from our content. Help a gal out and let your sisters, mothers, daughters, friends, and colleagues know about the show so that we can serve them too. I want to say a huge thank you to all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. We're welcoming thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads from all over the world. I want to shout out this week to our listeners in uh, Norway, uh, let's see, Algeria, and Montenegro. And we will be right back with Sacha Lila. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Wealthy Life Mentor. Women, are you on the edge knowing that life is calling you to make a change? Are you ready to be part of the evolution of what it means to be a wickedly smart woman creating your wealthy life by design, a life that is an extraordinary work of art? Angel B. Hartwell, the Wealthy Life Mentor, is hired by women in transition, women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance become clear on the value of their wisdom, and embody a beauty-filled, balanced life of shameless self-expression. Discover your Wealthy Life readiness by taking the quiz at quiz.wealthylifementor.com. And we are back with Sacha Leela. Before we went to the break, she was talking about... Uh, attracting partners into her life they were asking her for more rather than shutting her down I want to let everyone know where you can find out more about her and how she helps people to also open up to their sexual nature in more um, sacred ways as well as more I guess pleasurable ways you can find her at satcha 
info. That's sachalila.info. We will have that for you in the show notes. And when you get there, there's some free uh, resources there for you to check her out and check out her work. And so as we come back from the break, Sacha Lila, I'd love to hear, you know, one of the things that is, is interesting about this conversation that we've had is, you know, you started out in chiropractic, there wasn't enough life in it for you. You got clear that there was emotional stuff that was happening with your patients that was not getting resolved, but you also in your own personal life were shut down sexually. And, and so like your personal life sent you down the path of sacred sexuality, but somehow it merged with your professional life. So can you talk a little bit about making the decision to leave behind your old professional career? Because a lot of the people that are listening to this, this podcast uh, are often in those choice points in their life, whether they're leaving behind one career and going into another industry like you did, or whether they are, you know, quitting the corporate office and starting their own entrepreneurial venture. Uh, I'd love to have you speak a little bit about like what that decision-making process was like for you to shift out of chiropractic and start um, really a full-time career in helping people with sacred sexuality. Well, it was actually pretty easy to, well, in some ways it was easy. In some ways it was challenging because I had invested so much in be becoming a chiropractor. I mean, I, I, chiropractic school is four years and I did a year of sciences before I had to get into chiropractic school. And that was after four years of college already. So I, I was like in 10 years of college <laughs> and, um, it was, but I wasn't happy and I just valued my happiness more than I valued um, doing the same thing because I had put so much into it. I, it was just obvious that I was not, that it was not right for me. And I, um, one thing that I thought about is like, what it what being a chiropractor has given me and um it's it's been part of my process that led me to being even more effective uh in working with the body i know mm. the body so well and i know the energy and then i know the nervous system and the energy pathways run along with the nerves so i i um I'm, I'm grateful that I have that knowledge and that experience because it's allowed me to, um, to be able to um, have, a, have a kind of precision about um, teaching people movement because I, I know the body so well, I know the anatomy so well, and um, there's, there's a lot of overlaps between the the theory of the nervous system being the governing part of the body in chiropractic and the and the in the um, sacred sexuality teachings, the energy pathways um, moving through the body, they're very similar. And so, um, so I was able to enrich um, from my background. Mm. So, and I just, I just could no matter how much time I put into it, I didn't want to keep doing it. I was, right. I was just, you were done. I was done. You were complete. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, so then you started down the path of, of you started your own school, the center for divine passion. And so I'd love to have you share maybe your favorite client story from working with people either through your school or in your private sessions that you do with people like, do you have a really wonderful, juicy, sensual, sexual, sacred, sexual story that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, you know, maybe tell us where the person was before you started working with them mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. uh, what happened on the other side of that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I do, actually. Um, it, I worked with the man for a really long time. Uh, I, I connected with him 
through a friend of mine. He, she was his therapist, and he she had diagnosed him with borderline personality disorder, and um, also he had multiple personalities, and he had been severely sexually abused as a child by his mother. And he was, when I first met him, he was, um, he was sp split. He had a frightened little boy and a very wooden faced stoic man. And um, the man would come in and write the checks at the end of the session and leave. <laughs> And I worked with the little boy. I worked with him privately. Um, he, he was not in a good place to do groups because he was too wounded. It was it was too much for him. Mm -hmm. And I I just I saw him. Um, he was in a different city. He he was in Oregon, and I was in the Bay Area. So I used to go up to Oregon three or four times a year, and. Um, do sessions with people for about a week and um, I did that with him for a few years and each session was just so um, we moved so slowly we had to work with healing the child before anything else could happen and most of the session would entail um, I would hold him like a baby. Mm -hmm. I would, we would sit and he would drape himself across my body and I'd have my arms around him. And I'd just hold him and stroke him and tell him he was safe and he was okay. And I did that for years, that's all we did. And he started developing some trust and we got into working more energetically with uh, breathing and sexual energy and um, teaching him how to move the energy through his body and how to not freak out when he started feeling the energy and that was the biggest deal was mm -hmm. to not freak out when he started feeling the energy he was kind of a natural um, savant really in um, his he was a very sophisticated with his energy perceptions and movement but he would get scared so it was all about creating safety, creating safety, creating safety, creating safety. Mm -hmm. And um, we just worked a little at a time. He would come down to California and do intensives with me towards the end of the time. And um, he'd be here for a week and I'd see him every day for several hours. And, and um, um, it took a long time. He was a very slow mover, but he was moving. And um, he, one thing that was really sweet uh, was partway through that time, he started having dreams where a goddess came to visit him in his dreams and told him what we should do in the next session. So I let the goddess guide the whole process. I just mm -hmm. said, okay, that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it was right on. His goddess was was really got a good guide, and so we were both kind of at the edge of um, learning how to work with him. I had never worked with anybody that wounded before. Mm. And um, to make a long story short, he changed so much. He he, he integrated his two uh, personalities, uh, and he turned into. A man that joked and laughed and you know had expression in his face he attracted a girlfriend and they he had a relationship and he he had still some problems but they were like normal neurotic problems not in, in, you know not the wounding that, that he had mm -hmm. when we first started and he said that I was the one that helped him do it Beautiful. and you know, it just I bring I feel tears when I said that, you know, to yeah. be able to do something that deep for somebody has mm -hmm. just really, you know, it's one of the best things I've done in my life. 
I love that. I love that. Well, you know, um, Satya Leela, there are many women who are probably listening to this um, who might be thinking about stepping into healing roles themselves mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, the just giving people the knowing that you can create such significant change is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And you also have a business. So in the last few minutes, I'd love to hear from you um, if you have any thoughts about or have had experience in your own business with, uh, you know, working with the energy of money, because a lot of mm-hmm. times the energy of money can be uh, something that gets very deeply tied in with the sexual energy and the mm-hmm. creative energy, and there can be a lot mm-hmm. of distortion there. So I'm curious about your journey with money as a, you know, as a business owner and how uh, that has been for you. Yeah, it's it's the place where I feel the most challenged. Um, sex is easy. <laughs> <laughs> Money has been my teacher, and mm-hmm. I've worked with that all uh, my whole life since I've been self-employed. Mm-hmm. And um, I've learned tremendously. Uh, I've learned a lot of stuff. I've learned about how money is energy-based. And one of the things that I have found uh, is that the sexual energy is definitely tied to the money energy when you're when you're in that flow and by sexual energy i don't necessarily mean intercourse or physical sex i mean being in ta- tapped in to that source of life and vitality that is our sexual energy and that can be as simple as swinging your hips as you walk or dancing in in a sensual way or you know, um, it, there's lots of ways to express the sexual energy, but the, the more you are tuned into that energy, it's like you draw, I, I've dropped into a kind of a flow that is receptive mm-hmm. and uh, attracts, because it's receptive, it attracts um, more and more abundance. And I've, um, I've noticed the more that I relax and enjoy and uh, feel pleasure in my body and my senses the more the more I let go of stress and worry about the money and just enjoy my life the more the money flows in and Mm -hmm. it flows in in very unexpected ways too it's really fun to watch oh my god here's thousands of dollars I had no idea I was going to get and it came from this and I had no idea that this was going to happen, you know, and, and uh, I've learned to relax and trust and, and just stay tapped into my flow and learn, you know, receptive. Yeah. And open. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. I love that. Yes. The out of the blue money is the best. It's kind of like that your partner saying, do you have any more? (laughs) Yeah. So we'll just say to the universe, do you have any more universe? Thank you so much. All right. Beautiful, Sacha. Well, it was a pleasure to have you here today. Listeners, we love feedback. Please let us know what you thought of today's episode. Go right now to weeklysmartwomen.com to join our community, share your takeaways, ask questions, or submit guest suggestions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you are a wonderful woman. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to rate and review Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each new episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.